Hello everybody, my name is Kai, and today I will be discussing Citrine's last wish with all of you. Now before we get started, I would just like to remind everybody that I do have a Patreon. Go check it out at the link in the description below if you would like to support me and directly influence what gets made on the channel. A huge thanks to my supporters, The Mad Monk, Young Mung, Scotty Nose, and Ward Platypus. You guys all make this possible and are absolutely amazing. Now before we get started, I just want to let you know that this is going to be a longer, more audio-based video with some gameplay in the background, so feel free to play some yourself as you listen, but I will also be showcasing what I am speaking about on screen when I mention them, so feel free to watch as well. Anyways though, Citrine's Last Wish was released in Warframe yesterday, and it brought with it a slew of new toys for us to play with, including a new Warframe, weapons, and a new game mode. Now if you would like to see a quick rundown of the entire update, then go check it out on my channel, link in the cards right now. But the main two portions of this update were Mirror Defense, the new game mode, and Citrine, the Warframe that you get from said game mode. Starting off with Citrine, she's actually really good and very fun. Personally, I find her to probably be the best frame released in the past year. She is more support focused like Wisp, but has access to some of the best damage abilities in the entire game, and her helmet looks really really good as it's practically infinite energy generation. I'll be doing a full Citrine guide very soon, so just make sure you keep your eye out for that, as I will go as in-depth as possible as she has some crazy cool synergies and abilities I would like to show you guys. But if we talk about the game mode that you play to acquire her, that being Mirror Defense of course, the praise is really not that high. Mirror Defense takes place on the Mars Grenier defense tile set and then about halfway throughout a wave you will honestly go through a very cool looking void tunnel and transition to the old Corpus defense tile set. Similar to Conjunction of Survival which was released with Lewis Prey, this is just a normal defense with a twist and it does not matter how cool that twist is because at the end of the day this is a defense mission and defense missions suck. I really cannot express just how boring playing defense missions even on Steel Path is. The enemy density is practically non-existent and it makes for a really boring experience grinding for Citrine and her weapons because the grind for her parts is intense, but we'll cover that later. The gimmick present in Mirror Defense is that there is a unique crystal gathering part of this mission, but it does little to increase your enjoyment. These crystals will spawn in random places around the map marked as Citrine Remnants. You can also get them by killing these enemies. When you pick up these crystals, it is team-wide, thank god, but once you have 50 of them, the defense target will be fully healed as they do not heal passively like other defense targets do. But there is really not that much of a rush to do this because again, the enemy density is so bad that the opposing Grenier and Corpus will barely even touch the crystal to do some meaningful damage. When you acquire 50 though, you will also spawn a version of her third ability, that being Citrine's, above the defense target, which shoots things that you shoot at with a chance to proc any of the four base status types, but on Steel Path, the damage is terrible, and like I said before, barely any enemies will get over there, again, even on the Steel Path. But speaking of the Steel Path, there is a difference between playing Tayana Pass, which is the name of the node that Mirror Defense takes place on, on the base star chart or in the Steel Path. Completing waves of Mirror Defense will award you with Belric and Rania Fragments, and completing one wave on the base star chart will award you with five of these, while its Steel Path counterpart will award you with seven per wave. Now collecting 50 of the remnants that I mentioned earlier will also give you either 5 or 7 of these fragments based on the game mode you're playing of course, and what side you're currently defending. So if you're on one side and collect 50, you will get either Belric or Rania's, but not both. You only get both when you complete a full wave. But you can use these fragments and go talk to Otak in the Necrolisk and a store will allow you to buy all of Citrine's parts and both of her signature weapons, alongside 5 new arcanes, a Prex card for Citrine, and a new Captura scene. This is a pity system very similar to the one from Archimedean Yanta and Lewis Prey for Thraxplasm. While I really appreciate these pity systems for new content because they put a hard limit on the amount of time it will take to acquire something new, I feel that DE has 100% overtuned the requirements for this one compared to Lewis Prey. To acquire just Citrine's blueprints and all of her parts, you need 1500 fragments of both kinds, which you will not have equal amounts of because you only get one type if you get 50 remnants on one tile set. So people on the Warframe subreddit did the math, and to get every single item in Otak's store, it would take about 2 hours of defense a day for a month. And that is egregiously long, especially for a game mode that I find to be as mind-numbing as this, marketing back to how terribly boring it is. But that's not really accounting for the mission drops, because yeah, you can get her parts and all of these things from playing the mission itself. So it should be relatively shorter, right? Well, Mirror Defense is actually on an AABC rotation, and Citrine's parts only drop on the C rotation. That means that you need to play at least 20 minutes of Mirror Defense to get a chance at getting her parts. It is a 6.8% chance for a blueprint and 4.5% chance for the rest of her parts. And these waves also take slightly longer as there is a 30 second transitional period between the two tile sets. 
but that is just for Citrine and does not count getting the other Arcanes or other weapons. Personally, I believe the drop rates could use a buff and the cost of things in Otak's store could also be heavily decreased. All in all, Mirror Defense suffers from just being a defense mission that takes longer and has a boring mechanic similar to Void Flood on the Xeramon. An increase to enemy density would help significantly by not only giving you more fragments, but also making it so you actually have more things to shoot at, which is why myself and I believe other people enjoyed Conjunction Survival so much more, because you could actually kill big groups of enemies. But moving on from Mirror Defense, the 5 new arcanes that you can get from the game mode or from Otak actually look pretty good and much better than the ones we were given in Lewis Prey. The first of those being Arcane Steadfast, and this one provides a 20% chance on ability cast for your next 3 abilities to not cost any energy. Personally, this one strikes me as the weakest of all of them, as energy is not really a problem when you get to the point where you would even need an arcane like this, and I don't really find it to be better than other arcanes available to Warframes currently. But the next four are actually really good, starting off with Arcane Double Back. Double Back provides you with a 25% damage resistance when you dodge, double jump, or bullet jump, which is something that every Warframe player does. Now this stacks up to a total of 3 times giving you a total of 75% damage reduction which lasts for 4 seconds but it's very easily refreshable as you just need to do one of the previously said 3 parkour maneuvers. While we do have many ways to get DR in Warframe, this one strikes me as particularly useful compared to something like Adaptation because Adaptation is tailored only to specific types of damage and needs to build up, it doesn't start at its 90% and this one is practically instant and resistant to all types of damage immediately. The next one, Arcane Primary Plated Rounds, what a long name, gives you an increase in primary weapon damage for a short time when you reload a fully depleted magazine based on the amount of rounds loaded into the magazine. Now, this originally sounded very good for weapons like the Felarks, but it actually depends on the entire size of the mag, which means weapons with huge mags like the Gorgon benefit the most from this arcane. All other weapon damage arcanes like Merciless and Deadhead provide a 360% bonus and you can only get a higher bonus with this one if your magazine is at least 143 bullets giving you a 400% bonus additive damage. It does stack even higher than that but its usage is pretty limited in my opinion. It's definitely not dead on arrival but niche at best even if it's really good. Moving on, Secondary Encumber provides a 24% chance to proc a completely random status effect when already procking another one with your secondary. This sounds absolutely amazing for primers like the new core or the epitaph, I would say that this is now the new best arcane for priming purposes and will be a staple going forward as more status is pretty much just more damage and this can proc any of them. Finally, secondary kinship provides a 20% buff to critical chance when you buff allies. Now I am not aware if this is flat crit or multiplicative, but regardless, for frames like Titania that can give lots of buffs to teammates, this sounds incredibly good, especially for her dex pixia. I'm unsure if this will be better than just running damage arcanes like Merciless, although some testing is definitely necessary because this could be absolutely insane. All in all, these arcanes actually seem to be pretty good overall, but the problem with arcanes, especially for primaries and secondaries, is that they have to compete with the OG3 of Merciless, Deadhead, and Dexterity, which all provide weapons with such a big damage boost that it's hard to make something on the same level that is just not outright better, as then it would completely sunset the other three. But even if it's any worse, like even at all, then there is literally no reason to use them besides memeing sometimes. Other additions in the update were 4 new augment mods for Gara, Yureli, Revenant, and Gyre, which all look to be pretty good, especially Gara and Revenant, which look super ridiculous, and Revenant gets turned into a better support than most other frames with his. I'm definitely going to make use of the Gara augment when I get to her video, which will be coming after I do Citrine very soon. There was also a change to how the Tau Forge drop chance system worked, essentially, it was reworked to give you an increasing 20% chance per week per shard type. So if I complete a hunt for a blue shard and do not get one, the drop chance will go up to 40% for just blue shards the next time it comes around. Next week's Archon hunt for an Amber will still just be 20% unless I don't get one. There was some confusion as to how it worked per shard type so I hope that clarifies it a little bit. Personally, I find the system to be better than what was there before, but all in all, probably not the best way they could do it. My own suggestion will be the ability to forge Tau Forge shards by achieving Tau Shard fragments of a specific color on the week of that hunt. These would be around a 50% drop rate from the final Archon Hunt mission, and would promote replaying the content to grind out 3 of them, which is what I would think should be needed to craft a Tau Forge of that week's color. You only need 3 of these, not a shard to sacrifice, which means that overall you would be getting more shards and more playtime in the game mode, which is something surely DE wants, as you will also have to increase your proficiency at Archon Hunting because of course people would optimize this. 
The only negative with this that I see is that it essentially removes non-Tau shards from existence as you can always get a Tau one, but personally I hate Tau shards as they add another layer of RNG to min-maxing. That is annoying, but I'm not a game developer so whatever. On the already existing side of gameplay things, DE also made a number of changes or bug fixes. Starting off with Gara, you can now shatter her mass vitrify with Shattered Lash and receive the bonus damage to your Splinter Storm both inside and outside the ring. A massive QOL update that makes her a lot more fluid to play. Meanwhile, at Teshin, you can now only purchase up to 25 of the Kuva or Relic offerings from him per week. This is a medial change for most players, but a disappointing one for those who are unfamiliar with the concept of a shower. Vendors like Chipper, Paladino, and Teshin now also reset alongside other reset timers on Mondays at 000 UTC or 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Breach Surge was also changed to apply its damage multiplier before the damage cap of 5 million, which essentially removed the ability to deal billions of damage with this ability. Overall, this is a nerf and disappointing for hitting meme numbers with it, but overall not a huge nerf to its actual usability in damaging things when you're not trying to hit the damage cap. They also changed Valkyr's prolonged paralysis ability, but it's still absolute dog shit, so nobody cares. They also removed the ability to gain overshields through the Augur set bonus when you have Parasitic Armor active, which essentially makes my recent core video redundant as that is the method that I use for shield gaining there. I use Shooting Gallery now instead as it has a large range which gives it massive CC, but it's still pretty annoying IMO. And finally, with the most recent patch as of recording this, they buffed the status duration mods from 30% to 90%. They also changed Valkyr's prolonged paralysis ability, but it's still absolute dog shit, so nobody cares. Besides this, there was a number of less important but still very very nice changes that they made, so make sure you go read the full patch notes linked in the description below, right next to my discord, which you should also join. On the cosmetic side of things, Rhino has a new deluxe skin being the Death Watch skin which makes him look like a really, really cool beetle. I honestly was hoping that this was a new Warframe, but it is just a skin unfortunately, still looks fantastic though, and you can get it for platinum and not actual money. A Void Shell skin was also added to Ember, coming with a new Fenarius Bark material structure, I hope I pronounced that right. And you can give your Drifter tattoos, which is like cool i don't really i feel like this is something that was going to come in do Vuri, but they just decided to drop it like earlier more customization is cool and stuff but it's like i mean it's here use it if you want but moving on for the final topic of the video i just want to talk about warframe's future specifically duviri paradox i know that most warframe players are eagerly awaiting the release of duviri which is you know very highly anticipated and they promise us to take the game in really exciting new directions and these mini mainline updates that we've been getting like Veilbreaker, Lewis Prey, and now Citrine's Last Wish have certainly added some new content and features to the game that people like and are happy with, but I think that most people are just hungry for something more substantial to sink their teeth into. The very paradox has been teased for such a long time now, it's been delayed like twice, and I think people are just eagerly anticipating the chance to explore this new world, encounter these new enemies, and discover these new storylines, or old storylines with new lore. Ultimately, I just think that the passion for Duviri is a testament to just how popular Warframe is and the deep connection that it has with its players, which is why everyone just wants it to be out. Of course, DE taking their time to make sure that it is polished and really ready is something that we like because, again, we do not want it to drop like another Railjack situation where it's just absolutely riddled with bugs, but I can understand the sentiment of like, all right, I'm going to drop the game until Duviri comes out. Personally, I'm very excited for it. I also have other games that are coming out soon, but yeah, those are just my closing thoughts. So yeah, that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this new style of video, just like a longer, more audio based, my thoughts thing. Just outlining a little bit more in depth on what I think of the current updates. I'm going to do these for pretty much every update actually. This is something that um, YouTubers do for Destiny, which is a game that I also play a lot and when Lightfall drops, I'm not gonna be posting like anything related to Warframe. Gonna try Destiny content, maybe. But yeah, besides that, I actually wrote a script for this one. I'm not sure if you guys could tell that I was reading off of the script. Hopefully it wasn't too obvious because I don't think that that would sound very good. But besides all that, again, I hope that this was informative and helped you guys. I do have a Patreon. Go check it out at the link in the description below and also join my Discord while you're at it. I hope you are all well and I will see all of you guys in the next one. Peace.